After today, I will have seen 92 movies this year, theaters and streaming. Let's talk about all the Christian movies I've seen this year. Not a Christian movie, but I feel like this should get an honorable mention. M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin is based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse from the Book of Revelation. For the longest time with Christian movies, it's been message heavy, low quality. We're starting to see Christian filmmakers, producers, and writers find a balance where they can give us the message we're looking for while also providing us a quality movie. I think Jesus Revolution did a great job with that. Instead of Christians being portrayed the way they want to be seen, we're seeing Christians as they are. Next up is Nefarious. I did not know this was a Christian movie before I went into it. Y'all kept bugging me in my comments section. When are you gonna see Nefarious? When are you gonna see Nefarious? Okay, so I went to a 950 showing and I was very confused because there were older people uh, somewhere, you know, close to elderly. Um, I'm like, it's 950 at night. Like all of us should be in bed right now. I was like, oh. Oh, this is a Christian thriller. The complicated humanity of good and evil is basically what this movie is. What I really loved about this movie is how most of it, I'd say good, what, 90% of it takes place in one room. Sean Patrick Flannery gives such a good performance. So Disney is having an awful year and we can talk about that another time, but this could have been a banger for Disney. But no, no, Disney, when they acquired 20th Century Fox, decided to shelve this movie and then Angel Studios, a Christian production company decided to buy the rights and distribute it themselves and it was a surprise summer hit. The one thing I remember about this movie is just the tone. It's very quiet, very um, male perspective. Now if I wasn't a nerd who kept a list of the movies that I see, I would have forgotten about this one. I don't remember too much about this one. It wasn't very memorable. I do think I enjoyed it for the most part. I mean, it's your typical Christian movie. This is something that I would watch when I'm bored on Pure Flix. So that movie was The Hill. Did I even say that? So, you know, typical Christian fanfare. Now we're back to this noticeable shift within Christian films where we're getting real stories, real people, honest storytelling within the Christian journey being portrayed on screen. The Blind, the Phil Robertson story, Duck Dynasty. I loved this. I did not love this. Journey to Bethlehem, the Christian musical nativity story. This is basically a Christian high school musical. I think I would have enjoyed this just fine for what it was, you know, just goofy, fun family entertainment had they not taken such liberties with the story. I thought it was unnecessary. Like, why would you do that? I've talked about this before, the way men and women are being portrayed right now in film. They're stripping women of their femininity and they're stripping men of their masculinity. You know, your male protagonists are now just goofy, bumbling idiots. Joseph and Gabriel. These are these should be the two strongest male characters in this story. Goofy, bumbling idiot. I don't know what he was doing. And most recently, The Shift. Christian dystopian thriller like if we're doing more of that I'm here for it. This movie is basically the book of Job but it's broken down in such a way that it makes it easier to understand and Neil McDonough chef's kiss my guy chef's kiss. <laughs>